Um, I did notice that there are a lot of new people here, though. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of set the stage here, and we're going to do a little bit more of an overview of Code Funds and what we're dealing with, why. Then we'll get to the what's the current state of the project, and maybe hopefully we'll have enough time for a uh, short primer on how things work. So to start with, for those who aren't familiar with Code Funds, and maybe those who know a little bit about it, why are we doing things the way we're doing it, and what is the problem we're trying to solve? So basically, it's this question is, how do we expand the capabilities of APL uh, so that it can be used by more people in more places and for more problems? Just how do we solve that problem? And there are a lot of different ways we could do this. So we could improve the performance of APL. We could make it easier to integrate APL. But we can also try to tackle problems that people don't think can be solved with APL. We can try to find new ways of applying APL. And we can teach people how to think better in APL so that they can use it in more places. And the Code Funds tries to do all of these, which is why it takes so long. Uh, so some history, uh, approximate dates. You know, even GitHub can't necessarily be reliable when you're going back this far. So um, it, in like the 2010 space, when I first started this project, the question was, why are you even using APL? So there was a big period in which the only thing that I was trying to do was to demonstrate that APL was a viable language to the outside world. And then, you know, somewhere down the road, we get to, well, is a self-hosting compiler on the GPU even possible? And so then some people perk up, they say it's impossible. Well, we get that done. And then, you know, a few years later than that, we've got people saying, oh, APL is really cool, but is it fast? Can I use it for my problems? And we kind of answered that. Uh, and, and now we're really, so how do we actually use Code Funds? How do we, you know, how do normal people use Code Funds without having to have too much expert knowledge about how the system works and things like that? So we're kind of in this space of making the system more usable uh, as much as we can. And so what do we actually have to address all of these problems that we were looking at? And Code Funds itself basically is a compiled APL implementation that is itself written in APL. It targets the GPU and the CPU, but primarily the fun, interesting thing to a lot of people is that you can target the GPU. But the CPU is also one of our targets now. It's designed to be self-hosting. It's not self-hosting yet, but it's very close to that. And unlike a lot of other a array programming project. It's designed to integrate very closely with the interpreter with the goal of making it easier to work with um, a compiled language interactively. So as, as of a day or so ago, uh, the compiler itself, including the parser, tokenizer, um, tree transformations, all that jazz, was about 1,400 lines of code. The runtime, which itself is now written in APL, is about 824 lines of code. And the C kernel, which is designed to support those uh, 824 lines of APL runtime, is about 8,400 lines of code. And these C kernels now, part of the features of Code Funds is these are retargetable, so we can start targeting other backends that you might want to target. So the, in order to make this possible, there are a few major big things that so we're sort of aiming for with Code Funds, and one is hackability. We really want to be able to change the system easily. Uh, it includes an offline parser that you guys can use if you want to. So this is a, a, a static parser that produces a full AST of your APL code and that you can use to do static analysis, type checking, inference learning, uh, any kind of code analysis you'd like. Uh, it's also portable. So the performance, our goal in the compiler is to produce perfor uh, perf performance portable output so that you can execute your code without having to change it on a wider range of hardware, on a wider range of workloads. And a big component of this is that as much of this as physically possible is written in APL. And by physically possible, we also include things that people didn't think were possible before. In fact, most of this compiler is APL that people didn't think was possible before. So what's our status? Well, uh, we, have, we have been doing some things. <laughs> so. Thank you. <laughs> and so this, unlike uh, our other children, this one actually came on time. Uh, so I made a very good decision not to go to Minnowbrook this year. <laughs> uh, but in the vein of previous talks, naming is hard. <laughs> so if you would like to know why we named our child this way, 
we've got some things. So Aurelia for the archangels, uh, Uriel, and uh, the Chinese name was uh, quite difficult to come up with since my grandfather is no longer doing the naming. Um, but yeah, so, so naming is hard even when it's not with uh, computer variables. <laughs> so what were we dealing with before all of this? So if some of you were at last year's uh, talk, you'll recognize that we had uh, version 4 and we were working on version 5. And now uh, on the GitHub repo now, up on master, is what I would consider sort of alpha beta of version 5 available that you guys can play with if you'd like to. Um, it's currently only build, it only builds on Windows right now, uh, uh, sort of intentionally while we're doing some of the additional work. But where v version 4 was a high performance on the GPU specifically targeted for, for large uh, GPU workloads, version 5 had the whole idea of like making the whole thing easier to target, making it more usable, improving the error messages, and uh, doing a lot of the uh, portability aspects beyond performance. And so, you know, as far as how that's going, that we've got our APL runtime rewritten now. The APL and APL sort of thing for the primitives is all good. And uh, you now get much better debugging and error messages and things like that, uh, including token by token stack tracing uh, in your com uh, compiled errors. Uh, but because of all this work, we had from uh, pretty pretty bad performance regressions, probably early half of this year or middle middle of this year. And so the decision was made to sort of delay cutting a, a final release for version 5 until we can do some more hardening on the performance and features uh, to make sure that, that when you try it, you just don't go, well, this is supposed to be a compiler. Why is it going so slow? <laughs> um, and then upcoming, and what we're looking forward to is uh, some of these new backend ports like JavaScript and um, other kinds of systems, as well as you know, some tutorials and other things to show people how to integrate this in with various tech stacks. So currently, the CodeDefense compiler still has a few assumptions that you have to be willing to swallow to really use it. Uh, one, you need to write with um, error, uh, defunds that don't involve error guards. You can use quad signal, but you can't you capture errors. So your errors have to go all the way out right now. Um, that's not a feature we plan to um, uh, not a limitation we plan to keep for a long time, but it is there for the moment. And but we do have full support for operators inside of the system, so you can you know all the ambiguity associated with user-defined operators is no longer a, a concern. And uh, so we do plan to support trad, uh, trad funds as well, but we're not there yet. Uh, so you do need to make sure that you're working in one top-level namespace, and it has to be closed, so you can't reference out into the root namespace. So all your code needs to be defunds inside of a single namespace script. And we don't support any of this like uh, system function special things. A couple of things like quad NC in very limited cases are available, but otherwise, uh, like quad R, quad S, um, quad M map, that kind of stuff, don't plan to use those, or things like your green threading, but the core language is what we're working with. So as far as support, we, we have support for the core squiggles. Mm with um, some minor uh, limitations on that still, but as you'll see, we'll probably, we'll, we'll fix that. Uh, the data types, we do have the large array of data types. We do not have um, bit vectors. We have 8-bit bools, but we have 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit numerics and uh, Unicode code points as well as complex numbers, and we have full support for nested arrays. Additionally, a little extra bonus is we support arbitrary ranks even above 15. Uh, if you'd like. So, now there are some limitations. Uh, so, don't swim in these waters. The uh, selective assignment and reach assignment are still kind of out of reach at the moment. Uh, trains, trad funds, error guards, inverse execute, we, we, we're quad IO zero, sorry. Um, format, some of those are, and these are in italics. So, those are kind of, you know, Caveats, the, there's a, a, few, a few little gotchas here and there that we're cleaning up, but there are still a little bit of limitations in terms of things that are in the newest versions that we don't have. So cool stuff. Uh, we've got this cool iBeam foreign function interface that allows you to write hooks into foreign code that's portable across multiple platforms. Uh, we'll manage the site moving of data on and off the GPU for you. So small arrays will execute on the CPU, large arrays will execute on the GPU. Uh, any defund can actually receive an access from the access operator. Um, 
We've got integration with DWA and an easy to use C API. You can, uh, the code that's generated are in lightweight DLLs that you can embed in any of your tech stacks. And you get these nice error messages in token by token stack tracing. So as far as the things we're kind of thinking about as we move forward with this, we want to make sure that we can sort of, in, in the style of JFODE's compiler, make small array computations that are loopy on, in APL go a lot faster as well. We still want to make things faster in general. We want to get JavaScript so that you can run your APL so quote unquote isomorphically on the client and the server sides. And we really want to tackle this problem of what it means to do like event handling and GUI handling in, in APL, but that's you know, future work. So uh, when we came into the conference, there were a couple of gotchas that were, are now no longer gotchas. Some of the access operators still uh, in this beta, we know about the access operator support, some of it's not there yet, but the, the, we had a few issues with nesting, rank, and uh, characters, and those are fixed now. So you can play with that. Uh, so how do you use how do you use code funds? So basically, the system you need as a dependency your OS compiler, a C++ compiler, or a C compiler, and the array fire libraries. And then when you get the uh, the source, you're going to compile a runtime object for yourself that you'll use to distribute with your applications. And then uh, you've got the core compiler that actually runs all of this. So when you install, you want to install your OS compiler. You want to install the array fire libraries. And then you grab code funds from GitHub and uh, run it from there. And there are two major commands that you want to work with. Uh, you've got your make runtime command, which builds a code funds DLL for you to ship and use uh, when compiling. You need to make sure that's available for linking. And then you use essentially a replacement for quad fix to execute over namespace scripts. And that will produce a, a DLL for your module and then link that DLL using quad NA against a namespace that it generates inside your workspace. And so when you ship all of this, you ship basically four things. You ship the ArrayFire DLL that you need, you ship CodeFunds DLL, and then you ship your module DLL as well. And if you're using the APL interpreter, you also ship that namespace that's linked up against that DLL. And so when you package things together, that's sort of what you package when you ship these things. So time for a demo. Let's see if this works. So here I've loaded in my source using link. Uh, from my from my uh, uh, repo, and um, I'm this is my standard workflows. I cd into my tests directory, and I work off of the CPU backend right now instead of the GPU on because this is a demo, and this you know I don't want the GPU to blow up on me. <laughs> uh, so then what I can do is let's play with a function. So here's a call to it's a little big, but Cody funds fix, and then we've got the namespace. And then we've got this little function that's going to uh, basically replace the even positions with a star, right? So let's run that. And oh, we've got an error. Uh, and so this is one of the things you get with the error messages is now you get sort of these region highlights on your error messages. And they can provide a little more rich selections. So we, we see that's wrong. So let's go and fix that. OK, that looks better. But oh, at isn't defined doesn't support at yet. Well, you know what? It is supposed to be a um, extensible system, so why don't we just add the at primitive in? Uh, so looks like at is available in our tokenizer. So let's load into the compiler. Here's our primitives. Looks like let's take at. Let's add at there. OK, and uh, let's, let's make an implementation for at. Oh, would you look at that? Huh. All right, so we've added a at to the primitive. So let's uh, go back in here. Let's reset everything and let's rebuild our compiler. Let's see how it goes. All right, not bad so far. This is where everything blows up usually if you make a mistake. All right, and so now here you'll see, notice that I've uh, copied all of these files over into my test directory. So these are sort of the things that you use to build. You need your codefunds.h file. Um, you've got your lib and your debug symbols and things like that. Those are all part of what you can ship when you build, or what you use when you build your applications. Uh, that's part of the like, development kit of the runtime. Uh, so let's, let's try that again. Oh, huh, all right, nice. Uh, and let's, uh, let's run it. Let's see. Uh, Oh, nice. All right. Well, but 
Do we support mixed arrays? We do. Nesting, too. All right. Nice. Worked. Yep, it did. It, it's weird. It looks weird, but we, we got it. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It, it, it worked. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, so, so yeah, yeah. But, but uh, you can see we've got, um, so some of these primitives like at still need a little work. Uh, but for the most part, you know, this is why it's beta. Uh, but that's the basic workflow that you would be going through. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's, it's not a quad I.O. issue, but it is like a, um, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an off by one kind of, yeah, it's an off by one. But yeah, so that's the basic workflow is normally what you'll do is if you're a user, you'll only have to, you'll, you'll run make runtime once and keep the, that dev kit wherever you're going to build your modules. And then uh, the codefunds.h you'll need if you want to call uh, the C code from or embed it somewhere into your C stack or something. And then otherwise, you just use the codefunds.fix um, calls to compile your functions. And uh, if you get an error in one of these functions uh, at runtime, you c you'll get um, st these, those stack traces that you... Uh, actually, you haven't seen a stack trace yet, have you? Let's blow it up. All right, let's blow this up. Oh, here's a gotcha. If I do this, Windows doesn't like it. If I retain a uh, reference to a DLL when I try to recompile the DLL until I erase it. So do something like that. And if I run this guy. So here I get a stack trace. And on the right-hand side here, uh, you'll see I select what I'm executing as I go through. And I link up, I'll tell you which your generated code and the lines on the generated code where to find the error, as well as the line numbers in the object that we compiled. So if that came from a file or something like that, you would, you would get the line numbers for your APL source, also uh, the line numbers for your generated source um, up the stack, uh, up the call stack. So, all right, end of the demolition. So one final note about running all this stuff is on Linux, for some reason, some Linux platforms just always don't manage their libraries correctly. So you need to make sure that the array fire and whatever path your code funds DLLs and everything are in, are in your, your search path for your li libraries. Otherwise, you'll get load errors with your, with your uh, shared objects. And you'll email me, and I'll send you this. And it may or may not work depending on your unique Linux configuration. So you need to make sure that these are, these are configured right. Uh, thank you. And I think we have time for questions.